So if I want to make a, uh, a rooftop on top of my emoji's head, I'm going to need more space. And the way I do that is I go to image canvas size. This grows the pixel space, doesn't change the pixels that are there. And I'm going to grow it from the bottom because I want to grow on the top. And I'm going to change the height to now, let's try 14 inches. That gives me a lot of space to work with. And now I get to pick the color of this rooftop, right? And I might want to use kind of the color of the cap on my sketch. So I'm going to double click and then pick that. So at any time, I can take that vector shape and I can hit Command T and I can change it. I can use Distort to kind of center it again. I can use scale and hold down shift to push it further up. And I can use warp to change the curve of the bottom. And you can layer these on top of each other several times. You can warp over and over again if you like. What's tricky about warp is getting it to, to be symmetrical. So that's why we're going to get practice with these tools in various ways. Now what I want to do is make another triangle. And it's always going to build the vector on top of the last layer that I selected. And it's going to use the last settings that I used. If I want a perfectly equilateral triangle, I just hold down Shift. And I can use the Move tool, and I can move it, and I can free transform it, and I'm going to change its color. And let's make it this color for now. And I'm going to grow it. So Command T. If I want to grow, this is helpful too. If I want to grow from the center out or stretch from the center out, I can hold down Option. And then it won't grow directionally, it will grow from the center, which is helpful for symmetry, right? And I'm going to bring it right to the edge of my circle so I know it's straight. Now the other thing is, if I want to kind of line these up, it'd be helpful to have some sort of guide. It goes right down the middle. And with the Move tool, if you click on your ruler, the rulers are at the edges of the frame. If your rulers are not there, hit Command-R because you want the rulers. And then you can click on the ruler with the Move tool and drag, and you get these lines, which are guides. And that shows me the middle of my image, which will help me then as I transform with distort the top of this roof to get it to line up. I can also do a guide that's horizontal, and that can help me see where the point of that roof should go. up there. All right. Now, at any time you want to see what your vector shapes are doing for you, you turn off your onion skin and you turn off your sketch at the bottom. And you turn on all your vector shapes. And this is what I have so far. And I just want to shrink my base circle a little bit. And then I want to tweak all of these. This is why I talk about working the basic shapes first. Get yourself a good base shape, just like when you built it in the website for your emoji before you work on the details. Because it's going to show you how to kind of manipulate these things. I'm just going to tuck that in. I'm going to tuck this in. So it follows that curve. It also might be helpful, this is just purely organizational, but to put a new layer. So remember you can get a new layer by going up to Layer and saying New Layer. Or you can use the little 
post-it icon at the base of the layer window. And I'm going to fill that new layer with white. So edit fill with white. I'm going to put that behind everything. And a shortcut for moving layers up and down, if you don't want to click and drag them, is command left bracket to move down, command right bracket to move up. Command left bracket to move down. They're right under the plus and minus signs. So good navigation tools. So these are my shapes so far. So far, so good. I'm going to change the color of my triangle and maybe make it match my yellow. And then I just got to bring that corner in. So Command T. And I'm just going to distort it, bringing in a tiny bit. Once you make a few shapes without a stroke turned on, it just won't make shapes with strokes anymore. And you might lose that quality. Once you've turned the stroke off, you might lose seeing appearance here. I know that's been an issue. But you can always go back to your first one where you first turned it off and you can find that appearance setting. And then if you want to, you can turn the stroke back on. But I'm going to show you another way to do strokes. So in my my estimation for the, the most effective way to do this project in the workflow is to only use fill colors, no strokes. And then if you want a stroke later on, like I'll show you on the roof here, what you'll do is you'll double click on the layer and add a stroke as a layer style. You'll have more control of it that way because you can make it go on the inside or the outside instead of just the center. And you can really change its thickness easily and its color. So strokes will be an option, but we'll do that a little bit later. I turn on my onion skin here. And now I can start working on something that's deceptively uh, difficult, which are these little noodle shapes, which you'll see a lot in these emojis, right? Like for the eyebrow. But if you notice, mine's still just called screenshot. I haven't saved my work yet. And that's dangerous. So I'm going to say file, save as, and then I'm going to give it my name always, and then a description. I'll do my name first and then the semester code. This is exercise two, light house. Is it light in the attic? I guess it's light in the attic, not lighthouse in the attic. And then I'm going to save it just to the desktop. So in the save as, I'm going to navigate to the desktop to save this PSD file. Make sure I know where it is. It's right there. And I mark it green because I'm working on it. And Savannah, we're working on exercise two. Our agenda's up on the board. All right. So if I want to do this eyebrow, these noodle tools, the good news is I only have to make one and then I can duplicate it. But it's going to start with just a rectangle tool. And someone was able to use the line tool and get a rectangle. But I'm not really sure how, because the line tools will usually just give you one span. So the rectangle tool is a, a, is a, a square format that you can make really skinny, but it will give you enough anchor points to manipulate, especially if we want to round out the edges. So how do I round out these edges and make it into kind of a noodle shape? Well, I right click and I can go to free transform path. And then I can right click and say warp. The other way is to just, if I'm going back to it, click on it and hit command T, right? And that will free transform and then right click and say warp. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. When I warp, I can pull out these curves and round them out. And if I keep them very horizontal, and lined up together, it will give me kind of an even curve. But it won't be as clean 
as a perfect circle unless I really, really am careful with it. The other way you can do it, which I've showed a few of you, is to just overlap a perfect circle at the edge. But I'm going to do it this way first. Because you can make vector shapes by using multiple shapes. I'm going to just stretch it out a little bit, a little bit. And this is all just to practice our transforming and really understand the difference between vectors and rasters. Because every distortion I make, it's always perfectly clean. And then I hit return. And now it's no longer a rectangle, but it is a vector shape. And now I can duplicate that, Command J, have multiples, and I do see hands up, I'll come around. And then I can hit Command T, and I can warp that shape. And this time, I'm going to warp it up. To get that curve. It's kind of curved noodles. You kind of fine tune it. Symmetry is difficult, right? When we're just making all of our own shapes. Okay, then to match the color, I can turn off my onion skinning, turn off the layer that's matching it, and then just double click to match it. Turn onion skinning back on. Then I can move it into place. But maybe I want to duplicate it first, so I have it to use in several areas. Like maybe I want to use it in the middle, and then Command-T, hold down Shift and Option so I can stretch it from the middle. And I'll have this be kind of the, the windowsill. Right. And then I can bring this one, duplicate it, Command-J, just because my shape palette, and then just transform it. Tilt it, shrink it down, make an eyebrow out of it. So I have these shapes. And then I can always hit Command S and save. And now I'm going to take that eyebrow, I'm going to duplicate that, Command J. Take that duplicate, Command T, rotate it, and then I can always warp it again. You know, I can kind of get it more horizontal, hit return, and then Command T again, and then warp it again. And this will give me a new set of anchors to stretch it with. So we want these shapes to get better and better as we're working with them. Because we're getting more and more comfortable with these tools. But it always takes experimentation and a willingness to, to mess up. And these exercises do not get graded on how beautiful they are. Just if you're trying to meet the requirements of only making an emoji with only vector shapes. Okay, let's do an easy one. These eyes, which look easy, and they are because I already made this asset, right? So I'm going to duplicate that and then rotate it perfectly vertical. I'm going to go ahead and make it a dark color just so I can see it clearly on the yellow. And then I'm going to hit Command T and I'm going to scale it down. And then I'm going to hold down shift so I can squeeze it shorter. Then return. Right. This is kind of an orders of operations problem. 